feel like we have more lighter corners here. We told Max to eat some pizza, but Pete notes that it's a it's a, that's a warning thing because he's in New Jersey. He probably did have a lot of pizza, so maybe this is the Max. <laughs> he might be maxed out. Max Melton. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? It's Chris Sims on Button. Ahmed Farid is here as usual. We're not eating pizza. I do like pizza every now and then. I had it. Actually, Sunday was a day where I kind of like, I don't eat pizza nearly as much as I used to. Growing up in Jersey, we're, you know, we're, hey, it's, it's, we got Italians everywhere. We got a pizza shop and, you know, a few in every town, right? Like, legitimate. It's disrespectful not to have pizza. It's part of life. Yeah. It really is. Like, hey, I'm going to go here and get a slice or whatever. That's yeah. the way it is, right? You know, Connecticut, they like their pizza too. It's 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 pretty good, right? I think it's a little overhyped. It's a little overhyped, okay? I'll I'll say that as being a New Jersey guy. <laughs> all right. But it but is expensive. I'll, it I'll is, give it them is that. expensive and it is a lot of I what, what I think always gets me too is I, I see so many places where I was like, This place is an Italian and they're famous for their pizza. Yeah. Right? And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't think I could put this it's good pizza, but this is like some Irish bar pizza and this is like a Jersey Italian. Italian piece, and I'm going to take that over it, right? People get so so worked it's, up it gets, about it too. It, it gets, gets real. It gets real. It's, it gets competitive. And then I, I come my in my spot to be the spot. And then I come in and I go, you know, I don't mind Domino's pizza. And people go, get out of here. No one likes me. <laughs> yeah. When you have a right. take like that, right. but I actually don't mind Domino's. No, pizza. no. Well, neither does my son. He doesn't either. Actually, he good. every now and then, like him and his friends, but they like it because there's like other things they can get at Domino's, right? They can get wings and yes. all that type of stuff as well. But like, how often do you eat pizza? Really? Like, I can't eat it like I used to. It doesn't agree with me like if i eat where mm-hmm. i'm the kind of guy you give me a traditional eight slice pizza right yeah i mean in my prime i would eat six pieces like no doubt about it totally. but but i've gotten to the age where not only do i hit like a carbohydrate a carbohydrate lull after yeah it, it does upset my stomach all the bread and the cheese so so you they this say that, they say that combination is actually not good for you like, like carbs refined carbs with, with fat. cheese it's of actually course a pretty not. bad combination yeah, right, for you health wise right. and now me a totally healthy person who has given up energy <laughs> drinks knows about stuff like that uh, but I tried to do this when I was a kid well Little Caesars was big in Michigan yeah and so they had the hot and ready you know right. the hot and ready okay, pizza is right. a large pepperoni pizza pizza I told my parents I was like I can eat a whole one of these I was like no problem I was yeah. a senior in high school right so what I did is I started eating them really fast because I learned that if you eat fast your body will not know that you're full by the time you eat all the pizza so the faster you eat your body won't know you're full until like it's too late incredible logic so it was a problem because i did eat super fast and i ate almost the whole thing and you threw it up super and then fast. i was i was very sick yeah i was very sick did. after that so at, i think like maybe that. at that point yeah i started to eat less pizza in my life yeah yeah i'm done with those <laughs> days like th- i had a sunday night this week where we ordered some pizza and i was yeah. like all right i'll, I'll do it i kind of eaten good the whole day and i didn't need a lot for dinner right so i was like all right yeah i'll do it and I did that and uh, I didn't overdo it because when I overdo it, I wake up in the middle of the night and my stomach hurts. So I'm very cautious of that. So Max Deep and all the corners here. out there need to eat pizza yeah. though because they do need to gain a little weight. And Matt Casey is producing for us today. Yeah. Before the pod said, hey, just make sure you get into your rankings a little quicker this time. Right. Now that's not going to happen. We talked about pizza for about <laughs> right. 10 minutes at the right. top of the podcast. Uh, we are doing Edge today. And I'm excited about this group because every year you look at the NFL and they're looking for impact players now at wide receiver, it seems like quarterback of course tackles an edge like like the guy on defense who can really mess up a game Definitely. defensive tackles and edge so before we look at this year let's take a look back at, at what we learned from from last year so we'll look at your 2023 draft rankings and this is what we like to do we, we like to bring this up as many times as we can will anderson you have gone over it on the podcast multiple times many already times all you year were, you were all out of it. consensus on will anderson you had him you dared have him the fifth best right. edge rusher yep. uh in college football last year he came out he did very well it was awesome Houston Texans last awesome. year. You voted for him as Defensive Rookie of the Year. Yes, correct, I did. And he won that award. Right. Um, so as we look at these, and Tyree Wilson was was hurt most of the year, yep. had a couple flashes with the Raiders, but never showed no, in the NFL not what he that can awesome do. tape that he had yeah. in college. Um, so in totality, as we look at your top five from last year, what do you think? Well, you know, I mean, the, the Will Anderson one hurts, right? I mean, you know, that's where you got to self-scout thyself a little bit. You've heard what I've said in, in, you know, during the season, all of that. I think he played over weight a little bit at Alabama that last year 
you know, I know in Houston it was get down there, lean up, let's just be explosive and get off the ball. They saw like moldable clay they in Houston. They saw moldable clay in Houston where they knew, wait, this guy can get like this and he's got it in him, right? And they knew that, hey, he was a little too thick that last year at Alabama, let alone maybe something that I didn't put enough stock into is that just he didn't get to play a style of football maybe that was totally conducive to him, right? So I think between that and then me not seeing sometimes – quite the bend or explosion off the ball, I was a little not sure. I was not sure. I was like, wait, is this guy going to try to play this as a a strength game, right, and overpower people? Because I don't see that type of power. And that wasn't the case. It was more of, no, he's about speed. He is about getting around the edge and and bend and all that. And he was phenomenal. And he's already one of the the better pass rushers we got in all of football. There's no questioning that. So was it just losing weight and getting him in the positions? I think it's that. And I think that's what's hard and them. scheme, right? Exactly right. And then you know, uh, being in a being in a spot, and that's where this is awesome. And that's where I think you know we see guys every every now and then pop from a different spot. Or ooh, he was drafted in the third round, and now he's one of the best pass rushers. How did that happen? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of the scheme. Wait, mm-hmm. he was asked to play head up against a tackle his whole college career. This is the first time he gets to line up wide, and they just go go get the quarterback. Don't do anything else. Don't worry about two gapping or reading the play. We got some of that in this conversation with this one. We do. But like Will McDonald, that who I had as the fourth pass rusher last year, he was like that, right? But I saw enough bend and then the pure physical strength. He was kind of doing what Will Anderson did, right? But to, to me, almost at a higher level as far as playing head up on the tackle, almost a 3-4 scheme, and then controlling people that way, I was like, man, this guy is really strong. I mean, he is pliable and flexible and bendable and do all that. But, you know, again, like we see. Uh, Will Anderson got into a spot, not only the right scheme fit and all of that, but you know they, they recognized what he needed to do with his game and his body, and he raised it, and I definitely missed that one. So PFF had Will Anderson as the top-graded rookie edge guy from yeah. last year. Right. Uh, had Nick Herbig, number two, yeah. limited snaps, Didn't but play when he ton, played, but he's got he real... looked awesome. He was a guy you liked and I you did. shouted out yeah. in your, your others receiving vote section right. last year. Liked him a lot during the year. I kept looking at him going, damn, I mean, the Steelers got another guy, another guy that they found, right, like an Alex Highsmith, in a middle round where you go, gosh, he's got the physical traits and the look to be a really good, good damn pass rusher. Keep going. Is there anybody else you're going to say? Two guys there? that got a lot of snaps right. um, were Byron Young right. for the for the Rams. That's right. He had over 1,000 snaps Who last did? Year. He was another guy. Did I make him in my uh, he wasn't top your, five, but I gave he him a lot of honorable mention. Five. Right, he, yes. right. You yep. shouted him out. Byron Young. Uh, one guy we haven't talked a whole lot about, the Chargers, Tuli Tuipulota. Yeah, right. So he was the third most snaps. He yeah. had 852 snaps right. last year. Right. It's not all about some of that's team need, but yeah. I, I think if you're playing a rookie that many, snaps, especially on a defense for the Chargers that had some big names, hurt, yeah. but big names you're on them. good regardless. Yes. You're yes. good, right. And he was a guy, right? He was the USC kid, right, if I remember yeah. correctly. He was kind of played all over the place. It was hard to gauge him. That's what's hard about this position a little bit. This year, I feel like we have true edge guys for the most part. Last year, right, it was a little different. Like Luke Van Ness was on the edge, but they played him like a D tackle at times. They asked him to do – it was kind of a hybrid, right, that way. We just talked about Will McDonald. He was kind of a hybrid as well. They weren't that talented on the front of the defensive line at Iowa State, so they were like, wait, you're the most freaky guy on our team. Play D tackle, play defense, and play five technique. Try to do everything for us, right? So that hurts the player at times. This year, I feel like we have true edge guys. I wasn't sitting here going, well, this guy's really a D-tackle who's playing D-end or a D-end that's playing D-tackle, whatever. You know, For the most part, got to see these guys in the position you'll see them in in the NFL. Okay, so we don't want to miss ever again. We want our rankings to be perfect this year and every year going forward. And so you were kind of texting back and forth with me and Matt Casey, and you wanted to figure out, like, what are we we missing here? Like, Who are the guys who are leading the NFL in sacks every year? Right. And for the guys that are not top – round picks top first round picks right like well, what stands out about them so yeah. you guys did a deep dive pete started uh, accumulating all the sack leaders from the past three years and so to no surprise uh to me to anyone out there tj watt leading with 47 sacks over the last three years he's a first round selection but you notice about a lot of these guys who are certainly in the top four right you have 11 first rounders total on this board the first four micah parsons nick bosa miles garrett tj watt so it seems apparent 
at first glance here that the drafting community, you do a pretty good job of identifying the studs and edge in college who will be the studs at edge in the NFL. Yeah, oh, well, it, it's a position that I think a lot of the times – Right, presents itself. It's not going to be one where it's like, oh, I found a diamond in the haystack. Everybody's got them in the sixth round, and I'm going to draft them late in the second and surprise everybody, right? No, it's like, what works as a pass rusher in the NFL? Freaky freaks coming off the edge who are explosive, strong as hell, and have length, right? You know, that, that's the big thing. I mean, again, I look at last year. I got the 25 sacks, the, the 25 sack leaders in front of me right now, right? It's even more if you just take it by some of the years where you look at it and go, I mean, of the 25 sack leaders in football last year, and there's some D tackles involved in that as well. But, I mean, listen, you go to the names and you go, T.J. Watt, Josh Allen, Khalil Mack, right? Micah Parsons, Miles Garrett, Montez Sweat, right? Aiden Hutchinson, Kayvon Thibodeau, Bradley Chubb, Hassan Riddick, uh, Nick Bosa, Karlaftis, Leonard Floyd, Chris Jones, Trayvon Walker are all first-rounders, right? And they're all in the top 25 of the sacks last year in football, right? So that's the big thing. There's traits here that are – obvious and that you need and that it, again it's one-on-one -on -one battles so that's easy to see but what's also easy to see and if you've been in the NFL a little bit or whatever and you know that you go hey wait big guy that's extremely explosive coming off the edge that really works in the NFL and then there's some numbers there that have to go along with that what are the numbers well I think you know again of course the size right and and you know any, anytime you're getting kind of under 240 or 245 as an edge rusher, you start to go, ooh, I don't know, is he big enough? Is he strong enough? Right? There's going to be that question. Arm length, right? You know, you start to get under 32 or under 32 and a half, people are like, oh, I don't know how good of a pass rusher you are because, again, these are tried and true formulas here. You look at like, you know, the top 50 sack people from the last five years, right? There's, you know, going to be maybe one or two with not the arm length we're talking about. You have to be able to get the offensive line before they get you. You have to be able to, right, use your arm length to start the power bull rush, right? Boom, I hit you. I got my arm on you before you could get to me, and now I got control. I got underneath your pads, and you're going backwards, right? There, there's that aspect. There's the aspect of the smaller guy, too, right, where the here it is, the big left tackle, Quiddy Pay, right, who we like coming out of Michigan a few years ago. He's coming out the edge. Ooh, he's explosive. Oh, my gosh, he's rocked up. He's coming around the edge. Oh, boom. Oh, man, Trent Williams, long arms. They punched him in the shoulder, and, whoa, it slowed him down and changed his total the total uh, you know rushing the passer approach there so that and then the 10 the 10 yard split of course getting out of the box is everything right and you know for the most part once you start to go over 166 in that range people start to go oh I don't know is he explosive enough to be you know a big time edge rusher and if he's not or if it's a little higher than that then there's got to be something else that's elite or brings you know or, or 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 makes the player good in another area to make up for that one area right and I think that's what we're seeing first rounders because we go wait these are freaks we know this blah 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 listen pass rushers the great pass rushers of all time they're they're, they're, they're not diamonds in the rough right yep. Lawrence Taylor everyone was like I've never seen somebody like that oh my god right Reggie White they were literally like oh my gosh Reggie White's that big and he can bend like that I've never so this is a freaky position right that's it's the freaks of the freaks in the NFL here and they're explosive and str extremely strong for their size as well and the ones that are fifth rounders Danico Autry yeah undrafted, let's unpack that a little bit Alex Highsmith third right. rounder right. Preston Smith second rounder Josh Sweat fourth like what, you wanted to talk with well, Pete what are we missing yeah right? what are you missing what are we exactly? missing right like what are we missing about like you look at the list right the last few years in sacks and go where why did we miss on these third or fourth rounders so most are still first rounder studs you get that but for the ones that do slip through the cracks why right like you know like a Matt Judon on the list here or Daniil Hunter right or, you know, even Zadarius Smith in years before this, right? right? Judon went to Grand Valley State. Exactly. That seems like an easier right. one. You got right. some smaller, Alex Highsmith, Charlotte. Right. So that, There's you know, some of that. In right? Gawkway, Maryland. It was still yeah. a bigger program, but not in the spotlight all the time. That's right. You know. Trey Hendricks in Florida Atlantic. So that explains some of it there. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, I think here, here was one, of the, one if, like you said, if you don't have the, you got to have something elite about your trait, right? There's something there. And Gawkway's speed and first step. 
you know, we're off the charts good, right? So that, and then he found a scheme fit and that, that worked great, right? All of that. Here's the thing that jumps out to me, I think, a little bit when you get into it is I feel like a little with the Zazaria Smiths, the Matt Judons, the Preston Smiths, the Nico Autry, right? We're not giving the, the, the you know, we're, we're not giving the non-sexy guys and maybe enough love, right? We're always looking for, oh my gosh, the explosion, the first step, the 10 yard split, all of that, right? And I don't know if we're giving the guy like a Judon or a Zadarius Smith, where again, a lot of these top pass rushers we're going to talk about today are all in the 250 range, right? A lot of your speed, superior edge rushers have been in the 250 range. You know, Khalil Mack, Bosa might have been just a little over, T.J. Watt, Lawrence Taylor, whatever, right? That guy, Micah Parsons, it's like 250, it's 255, it's 258, it's 249, it's right around there, right? But what I'm saying here is I don't know if we're giving enough credit to the, okay, maybe he's not quite as explosive, but him, damn, he's big and strong and physical and then has the long arm. So it might not be sexy evaluating here. But the Matthew Dons, the Darius Smiths of the world, the Harold Landry, who was a top 16 sack player last year, right? I don't know if we're giving that pure power part, the strength part, hmm. maybe the credit it deserves a little bit. I think that's the big thing I, I really look at with the guys we missed. Or an elite trait like a Daniil Hunter. I hated his film coming out of LSU. I thought, oh, he plays too soft. He's He never really attacks it, right? But... He did have incredible length, incredible long arms, right? He had some elite traits that way. And then the other thing that comes into play, too, is, you know, some of these guys are like, they've never been pushed. I'm always the freak. I'm the man. And then they get to the NFL and a coach is like, hey, you, you got to get out of, you got to do this harder, better, right? And then he's also in in a room with a bunch of other alphas who are kind of freaky, too. And they're like, He's looking at them going, damn, they're looking at me at the corner of my eye because of my effort and my lack of physicality there. I better buck up, Bart. Man up here a little bit, right? And I think that sometimes brings these guys who are maybe didn't have that hot poker or that fire, that that little element of we do this every day. We're going to dissect this. We're going to get into every detail. The coach is going to be on your ass. I'm going to be all over you as your teammate player, blah, blah, blah. And look, you got things that are better than me. And look at all the money I'm making. All you got to do is kind of be like me, and you can make – and that's a lot of the times wakes guys up that are like that a little that's bit. interesting. And I think that's a part of the psychology of this a little as not, well. Not all busts are made in the draft. They're in player development, and you can go the opposite way too, you just like you mentioned can. there, right. where a guy that could be a bust gets right. the right coaches or right environment and then becomes a – Sack artist. Yes. We hope that we have some sack artists in your top five here today. Uh, did you find some of those guys who are 275? Or are these the freaky 250 explosive dudes? Well, yeah. I think here what we got more here is going to be more of what we're talking about today is the, the 250 type. We are. We got some other guys here that we're going to name that are not going to make my top four, right, that can be what we're talking about, that bigger guy. But no, as far as the top five is considered, or top four that we're going to hit on here mostly, it's more of the two mid-250s explosive sexy type, right? And uh, you know, and, and again, they have a lot of the traits that we talk about that make sense to, to put them there. All right, so top four because you chickened out at five. You had too many competing for the number <laughs> it was five hard. spot. So it really like, was Let's hard. just go top four, and right. we'll give love to all those who right. are in the running for the number five spot. I think these four separate themselves. Okay. Okay, that's what I would say. And then there's a group of other guys, and again, the classes, the group of other guys where I go, ooh, I really like these guys. It's going to be a little bit about what you need as a defense. Do I need a strong side defense end? Do I need a weak side defense end? You know, am I going to ask my guy to do some two gapping and stuff every now and then? Right. It's going to be a little bit of that. Overall, though, I will say as a class, I really like the class. I really did. Like I said, with quarterbacks, like I said, with wide receivers a little bit. Right. Where I came away going, OK, you know, not everybody's a superstar. But like I told you before the pot, I came away going, man, I, I'd like this guy on my team. He mm-hmm. can play. He can play. He can start in the NFL. Right. He might not get drafted in the third round, but he's a starting NFL caliber football player. Right. That's what I found that, you know, I really liked about this class right here. The, the top tier guys, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I guess I'd been built up in my brain a little bit by people and talking to people. They weren't as freaky take over the game maybe as I was expecting. Still really good. Don't get me wrong. Still all the guys we're going to talk about are top 
you know, first round talents, no doubt about that. But it wasn't like there was one player where you're like, man, they just it destroyed wasn't like the game. I was watching Jadeveon Clowney that year and going like, man, if he gets single block, he wins every time. And teams have to double team him the whole game because he just ruins the game, right? It was not like that. Mm -hmm. Or like Khalil Mack. Now, I know he was at Buffalo or whatever else, but, you know, I'm just thinking of names that popped in my head where you just went, or I can remember Von Miller back in the day. Right, because I was just getting out of the. Uh, I paid attention to him a little bit. And was starting to get into the hobby of watching film. Where you just turned it on, you went, "Holy shit!" Like he's definitely the top three pick of the draft. Like right? whatever game plan the offense yeah. had, they're gonna have to change it exactly now right. Because exactly they got right. Imp- right. They got one impact player. Right. Well, you got two impact players. Yeah, immediate impact players. So you said they, there are four players who have separated themselves from the rest of the edge. You have two players that have separated themselves from this other. Players, you have two players in tier number one. Immediate impact. We'll start with your number one edge in the 2024 draft class. That player is Dallas Turner, Alabama. I don't think that's going to surprise anybody. I mean, I think everybody's got Dallas Turner probably in their top or top two pass rushers, right? I mean, we've heard him number eight to right. Atlanta like forever right. now. It makes sense. I mean, it, it does. They need that position. He's that type of guy, that type of talent, right? And potential to be had that's still not there yet. A player that I think is growing and that I like, right? He's not like matured and well-schooled and, you know, detailed on every little thing. He's still a little raw. But like we talk about the first round and especially this position, what's important? Elite traits. And this guy is elite traits galore. I mean, that's the biggest thing. His speed, elite trait. His bend, elite trait. His length, Elite trait. His strength for his size at 247 is elite, okay? So that's where it's really impressive. And the guy, he does it easy a little bit, a little too easy at times, where you're going like, wait, is is he really running that fast? Like, it just didn't look like, oh, well, I mean, everybody else in the D-line is uh, a, a yard and a half behind him, right? It, it, you, go, you look and you go, wait, that other guy looked like he got a good jump over there on the other. Chris Broswell, I like him. And then you look and you go, well, Dallas Turner's a yard and a half in front of him and didn't look fast because it's he's so freaky athletic and he's a little bit of a long strider and he's long in general, right? He's very high cut, right? He's one of those where you either have to have a trained eye or you got to watch him run down a few people a few times and then you start to go, oh, wait, that was a running back who ran to the other side of the field and he caught him from behind and ran and made it easy, right? And it didn't look like he was trying that hard, but then you start to watch and you go, holy shit, he's covering like four yards per stride. I mean, so that's where he's special. But his bend around the edge is special. His first step, the amount of ground he can cover around the edge is special. And then I think when you couple that too with the arm length and the strength he has in the upper body, right? He really only has like two pass rush moves. It's go around the edge with my speed and my bend, or I just basically run into you and try to power rush you. That's what he does. He's not, he's still a novice with hand use. You don't see spin moves, Mm -hmm. right? You don't see a lot of like, oh, I'm going to shake you and then try to get on the edge and do all that. He does a little of the fake outside, go He'll, inside move. <laughs> exactly you know, right. He'll go. Step. Exactly right. The yeah. jab step, the stab step, yeah. right? F- threatens you upfield, puts his foot in the ground and kind of comes around and goes that way, right? <laughs> Excuse Uh-oh. me. But that's where, you know, again, there's aspects of that that I really like because I know those are things he's going to get the NFL with the guys in the locker room and other defense ends. They're going to teach him hand fighting, how to do that. Hey, do a spin move. You with as fast as you can go upfield and your long arms, your spin move, you're going to get on the edge. Like So th- there's some things there that I love in the rawness of the football player, right? Speed to power is real. The ability to get low is special, right? There, there's, there's few guys like that can get as low as he can with that shoulder from the ground and the legs outside the framework of the body, and he can still run around the edge at close to top speed doing it. Yeah. You know, to, to me is, is, is rare. You don't see it a lot. So you, you like the fact that he has still room to grow. I he do. has technique work to do, I and do. he understands that as well. He had that in the conversation with you and, and Mike Florio at the Combine talking about what he still needs to work on. We have that soundbite from back then. Probably uh, tightening up on my technique a lot more, you know, yeah. and my, my hands and striking in the run fit. And, you know, just hand placement in general and pass rush, too. When you're going against guys like Trent Williams now yeah. in the NFL, and, you know, He's gonna be on Dawkins you. and, right. like, just a whole bunch of grown men that's yeah. been there done that. So, like, you know, you got to 
you got to be on your best game. You, yeah, know? you can't right. be the same player you was in college. You got you to gotta elevate, of course. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it's just like a different type of talent level in the NFL that, you know, some of the stuff that you did in college, you might get away with, but you can't get away with it in the NFL. An unnamed NFL executive says he is such a talented athlete. One of the biggest mistakes people make is looking past athletic ability and focusing too much on technique or polish yes, when they come out. Go. Just look for dudes and coach the rest of it. Uh, like we were started the conversation up. The, the guys we're talking about that are the top pass rushers in football, they're dudes. They're dudes. They're guys that, again, in the locker room, it's just like he's the biggest, fastest mother on the locker room. We don't want to mess with him, right? That, that's what that guy is. Don't always look at it and go like, "Well, he doesn't put good hand placement here," or you know, sometimes he, you know, takes the wrong gap and his run. Like again, th those are coachable things. It's this is a position of raw ability, freakiness, right? And that's where he's got it. I mean, again, it's an easy 247. Like you saw him there. It's broad shoulders, it's long arms. When you see him in person, it just screams athlete. I didn't need to see. Like, I did not need to see Dallas Turner and somebody tell me, oh, he's a special athlete. He's one of those guys that's kind of rare where you see him and you go, I've never seen too many people built like that. That square of shoulders, that big and long and strong of arms, a neck like that. And wait, your waist is that skinny? That's crazy. And then your ass and thighs are that big again? How does that work like that? He screams that. And then you see his calf muscles, right? And the length of, you know, the the knee to the ankle and those things. Again, other things you see from great pass rushers or specimens in the past it just screams all of that right so that's where it's great and you know like here's yeah. his uh, oh. measurables we got the octagon it's which awesome. is not as good as a nonagon right or a decagon <laughs> but i'm still glad that he did the octagon because he didn't have to do this at all you talked about that in your conversation with him like why are you doing that and he's like because I, I think I can go out there and dominate, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, height and weight on the on the lower end yep. for for a prospect yep. here, but all of the athletic traits: broad jump, vertical jump, forty yard dash were uh, off the charts, ninety eighth percentile. Off the charts, right? Uh, th that that's the big thing, you know. And and the weight again, I don't think it'll ever be much different. I bet you in two three years he'll be a more jacked. Uh, efficient 255 or 256 as he gets older and gets in the NFL life. But the wingspan of 83, right? You know, 446 at 247, the vertical jump, it all speaks to the explosion. And it's easy, like we talked about. The strength is, I, I think, again, the ability to set the edge in the run game. Right, the one thing I kept looking at is goes, oh, okay, he handles his own against tight ends. Like tight ends have no chance against him. That's great. Wait, is he going to be able to? Is can he man up against a tackle all the time? Can he do that? Well, definitely can. No doubt about it. He's got no problem in those areas. Right. He he again like Will Anderson. He, he was not always given the green light to pass rush. He's got a lot of games where you go the majority of the snaps. He's on barely on the outside edge of the tackle, and they ask him to grab the the tackle and read the play mm. and then oh it's a pass now you got to rush the passer right so that's not conducive to what he's going to be asked to do on a regular basis those are the times where you look at the tape as i do now yes as right. an amateur film yeah. scouter yeah and you go oh he got locked up by the tackle but that's what he's being asked to he's do in being those situations asked to do exactly right and that's where yes you know th there's that, that's the Nick Saban defense, and maybe that's not what I didn't take into account enough with Will Anderson. But with all that stuff, too, he's phenomenal at it. I mean, how many times did you just see him do this, and he holds the guy there, and they can't move him? And you're like, wow, this guy's 320 in front of him, and they're running right at Dallas Turner, and they're not moving him. Like, Dallas Turner's there. He's going to disengage and try to get off and get an arm on the tackle, right? Or, you know, how many times I saw him just, like, do the Khalil Mack inside stab where, you know, he's running the speed pass rush, and then he takes that inside arm and hits people there that way, like that version of this, the bull rush or whatever. I mean, that, that to me is special, the way yeah. he does that, right? And, uh, yes, he to me is a guy that's – going to thrive even more in the NFL, like his old teammate Will Anderson, right? Where he just gets to a football team, they go get wide and rush the passer 
85% of the game, mm-hmm. and that's all he's going to have to worry about. And, you know, in Alabama, hey, they're worried about running quarterbacks, and there's more different styles of offenses and things like that. A lot of the times he just wasn't given the, like I said, the green light to just go attack. So I went back and I watched the Rose Bowl, and I watched every play that he had in the Rose Bowl against the University of Michigan. Um, I, I thought the, the Michigan offensive line, which was one of the best in college football mm-hmm. last year, of course, handled him pretty well. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't a, a ton of plays that he made. He got locked up on that game-winning overtime touchdown by Colson Loveland, tight end. Yeah. So I was like, all right, that's, yeah. not, that's not great. They did run away from him quite a bit, so right. I do think they were trying to avoid him. Uh, but he had, he had a very little effect as a physical force in that Michigan game. So I'm like, all right, that wasn't what I expected. 1987 HLW says, is Dallas Turner your Will Anderson this year from the bits I've watched so far? I don't get the hype. Nothing amazes me with him, especially against the good tackles. So how do you balance those two things? It's like the Rose Bowl. It's like, I didn't even know he was out there that much. And then you got a guy like 1987 HLW coming at you with like he didn't see it either. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's not as wowing as maybe you would expect, right? Like I said, I think it's a little bit of like, hey, this is a guy that's got all the traits, right? He's smart. He's freaky athletic. And... You have limited plays where you see him put it all together and work the right way, but these are the guys, again, where you go, man, we've seen guys like this in the past where we've got all the same thing, and then they get in the NFL and the game's simplified and they get taught a few things and all of a sudden they just explode as the human as a, as a human wrecking ball. So is there a little, mo- a little more projection with this? There definitely one is. Ranking? Definitely a little bit more projection, I think, with this. Knowing what works right, and then... Yeah, a little bit of like, hey, I've seen these kind of guys. They usually thrive, and he's got all the things I would like to believe that is going to take him to the next level, right? And I think that's the biggest thing, right? Like I'll say, the guy we're going to talk about at number two, I'm not so sure isn't the better player right now this second, Mm. okay? But I don't know if I necessarily agree that I think he's going to be the best pro and made to be a sack artist off the edge and a guy who can get 15 sacks a year. Let's, so that's the big thing. And before we get to him, uh, all right, just one before, more thing. One more thing. You could tell you almost made your own transition, and then you oh, regretted no, I was like, it. Wait, wait, like, wait, wait, what wait. am I doing? Right, like, like I said, he's raw. <laughs> he's an awesome player. He is gritty and tough and does that. The Michigan game, yeah, that's not the game he's looking to play in, right? That's, again, where he's, he's going to be more fit for the NFL. Oh, Mahomes is dropping back. Mahomes is going to hold the ball for four seconds because he's going to do that. Josh Allen is going to hold it. You're going to get a real chance to work around the edge and do that, right? I, you're not drafting him to go, hey, we think he could stop the run on second and six. We're going to take him a number eight because he can stop the run. That's why we're doing it. No. Yeah. You know, if Atlanta takes him at eight, they're going to be like, we want him because we got to get people to get after Baker Mayfield and Derek Carr and Bryce Young, and we got to get after him on the edge, right? And he does want, he said yeah. that in your interview with him, he goes, the one player I want to tackle is Bryce, is Bryce Young. Young. Never yeah, got to never do it in practice. It and if right. he goes to Atlanta, right. he'll get to do that a couple times a year. I think this is a Von Miller, Micah Parsons. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Brian Burns, not right now, but right type of player we're talking about. Hassan okay. Reddick, right where I just go, it's gonna get unlocked, and I'm too impressed with the traits. Even though, look, and again, I know it hasn't always been all put together, and we're just like, wow, ooh, ooh, my gosh, oh my gosh, right? College game is a little different. What he was asked to do a little different. He is a little raw, but I like that he's young, he's moldable, mm-hmm. and. You know, the pure freakish ability is there to be had. So you've got two players in your tier number one of immediate impact. Number two, you've already hinted at it. You've alluded to it. Your number two edge rusher who uh, you watch the tape of this guy and you're like, well, that stands out. Competition, you might have to question a little bit, but it definitely stands out. Your number two edge rusher is... Leatu Latu. Yes. Leatu Latu. Leatu right? Latu. Leatu Latu. Right. Gosh, I just, it's amazing how I feel like I say it good and then I get on here with the microphone in my face and I just choke. It's like to the death. pressure of having to do it fast because you don't want to do it too slow. Leatu Latu. Yes, Latu. That's what I feel like I'm just going to have to, get the old <laughs> Latu. That's what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Um, wow, do I like him, right? He is a lot of fun to watch. He's different a little bit than Dallas Turner. Like Dallas Turner, right? It's, 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 it pops off the screen one of just how naturally athletic he is. Right away, you just go, ooh, whoa, 
Well, 15 with the gold helmet on looks a little different than the other guys out here. Just the way he's built, the way he moves, right? He's extre- extremely flexible, pliable, bendable. He's twitchy as hell, right? You know, his arm length is 32 fives and eighths, but I look at it and go, mm. damn, I don't, his arms look long as hell on film. Now, maybe it's the total wingspan that needs to be taken into advantage with Latte. Maybe the, the shoulders and the broadness of the shoulders make it look a little different that way. He pops his arms out of socket and I gives mean, him two extra I, inches I when he needs it most. I don't know what it is, but he was, I mean, <laughs> he's arguably as good as anybody I've seen in this draft as far as getting off blocks, snatching def- uh, uh, blockers out of the way to go make the tackle or do anything like that, right? It's, it's like I said a little bit about Dow Stern, it's an easy 259, 260 pounds, right? I met him in person. It's big, square, easy, naturally big person. If he wanted to be 270 in a month, he could probably do it easily, right? But he's going around being a great athlete. Look at that. Great legs, just like Dallas Turner, right? And the right away, you know, the biggest thing is you just see an elite athlete as soon as you turn on the film, right? The great feet, the great side-to-side movement, whether it's, hey, they, they faked a run down the middle and now the quarterback's keeping it on the edge and he kind of shuffles down with the running back and then runs down the quarterback on the edge right or hey just the running back making a move and all that he's incredibly bendable and awesome in space that way right the change of direction is off the charts good the upper body strength and the hands and all of that right I mean he, he's as good as anybody there is let alone doing it great eyes in the backfield to do it knows where the ball carrier is at all times got a real nose for the football that way extremely extremely strong at what I call, you know, what we in the scouting community, point of attack, right? Tight ends, forget about it. He's going to embarrass them. You know, tackles, he does more than hold his own. He can hold his own and he can move them around a little bit as well, right? He's phenomenal versus the run. You know, he really is. I mean, that's that's where you, you first watch it and just go, wow. I, I know I'm supposed to be watching a pass rusher, but this guy disrupts and affects the whole game as you watch it with the, what he does in the run game as well. That's where he's right. awesome. So really impressed by the specimen, the player, the instincts, everything about him. I mean, there's so much to his story, too, that you got a little oh bit with gosh. your interview with right. him, too. Started at Washington yep. and then was medically retired with a neck injury. It was a neck injury, right? Um, it was. It was a neck by, injury. Right. Cleared by doctors at UCLA and then went on to dominate. Had 13 sacks, leading the Pac-12 last year. Was UCLA's first ever winner of both the Lombardi Award and the Ted Hendricks Award as the nation's top DE, D-end and defensive lineman. So, like, his production is off the charts. And you look at his tape, you're right. You look at his tape, he's like, no tight end has any chance of stopping him. And most tackles don't either. You do wonder a little bit about the Pac-12 and, and that yeah, whole situation. Sure, right. Um, but uh, Saturna Vine, and this will be the big question with him because his tape is awesome. Saturna Vine says, how much should Latu's medical factor into his evaluation, even though he played at UCLA for two years, played a lot. In my opinion, he has some of the best tape hands, maneuvers to generate uh, pressures constant, uh, consistently. Love the pod. Always good to hear your analysis. I, I mean, I think you said it right. All those things, I'm, I'm exactly, you're exactly right. That's what I, I, uh, I see too, right? I, I mean, it's hard for me not to look at him first off. Like, you don't see any signs – if you're just watching of him going, oh, he's not physical, he's afraid, he's protecting this. There's a few plays where I go, ooh, he could have maybe stuck his face or head in there a little bit, right? And I think maybe he just goes, puts his chest in or whatever, and I go, oh, that's probably just because he's a little wary of his neck and doesn't want to you know, mess with that, which I understand, hmm. right? His story is a lot like the Jalen Phillips who got drafted, you know, was at UCLA and went to Miami. He's got the vice versa story here. Right, J- Jalen Jalen Phillips, when at UCLA had a concussion issue, they told him not to play football anymore. He transferred to Miami. They let him play, and then boom, he's a first round pick. Right, and he's thriving. He got hurt last year, hurt his ACL. I know that, but Jalen Phillips is, for my money, I mean, you know, you heard me say this the first part of last year. He's one of the best pass rushers in football. Right, I, I think Latu Latu can be just like that. You know that that's where I look at it, and I wouldn't be totally, I wouldn't be concerned. You know, with the neck thing, I don't. I don't see anything from the last two years, and I didn't dive deep into last year. I just watched a little to kind of go, oh, okay, he was good last year too, right? Like, 
Like, I don't see anything that would hold you back that way. Now, again, I'm not doing x-rays or know anything about ligaments yeah. in the neck and all of that. But It just could be one of those yeah, things, right, right. Where, it, where a team goes, instead of eight, ah, I'm not super comfortable with I, missing I think, on eight. I think that's what happened to Jalen Phillips. You go 20 yes. or something like that. Like, that's all right, if we miss here, happen. if right. he gets hurt, I'm right. okay with that. Right. Um, we have some video of his pro day, too, yeah. so maybe we can scout this. Uh, and I think the other question with him, the medical thing, uh, whatever's happening there, uh, hopefully he's healthy and he, he's back, his power. Yeah. Right. What, how how much strength does he have? Yeah. I well, and I think like again, I think you answered that already, right? I mean, you answered it again. This is where we don't dive too deep into this. Mm. Like the power, you saw him manhandle like every tackle he played against, right? Especially in the run game, right? And and especially tight ends. I mean, that that's what I'm big into. If you're going to be an elite edge guy, right? Tight ends don't be blocking you. When I no start to, when I start to see a tight end like consistently beating you, right? I know there's going to be the Dallas Turner versus Loveland and Michigan, right? And let, let's not forget, like the guy you're talking about, a tight end, Loveland's probably going to be a first round pick he next probably year. Will so he's be, he's yes. really damn good, right? Yes. So, but 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 yeah, you know, I, I have no problems with the power. Here's, I think his speed to power is very good. I think he's got good bend, right? It's good get off. I'm not going to say it's wow get off. It's real good get off, right? He's got incredible quicks, like your man Aiden Hutchinson, too. He can win with quicks to power sometimes, right? Which is not a real phrase. Mm. I've kind of invented that one, but he can kind of get you because he's so quick side to side. He can get tackles a little bit like, oh, is he going to go inside? Is he going to go outside? And then he kind of hits them right in the chest and all of a sudden they're going on a ride, right? You know, so he's got that a little bit. Now, what I wish I would have saw, and I think what he doesn't do enough, is like he has good bend. It's not Dallas Turner bend, but it's still damn good. And you see a few where I go, oh, shit, that was incredible right there. So it makes me believe there's more there to be untapped, right? But I wish he used his speed rush more. That was, that was to me... You know, the one thing I wish, I just wish, I wish there was just, he just trusted his more explosive speed rush from time to time. I feel like he was always trying to look to make a move at times where I want to go, uh, I, I think you guy can beat this guy around the edge. Yeah. Knows how to use his hands a little bit, but not so much to where I'm like, oh God, the guy's like a fifth year veteran already, right? It's just like the basic moves of use, using your hands, right? And like you know, slapping the Slapping the hands is going away. around the yeah. edge or the, you know, slapping, you know, rip underneath all that he's got the, the the you know the grade school basics there as far as that's concerned but i like that right phenomenal player all around you know definite top 20 pick in my opinion i mean if he falls outside of the top 20 it's just because of what you said people are like ah i don't want to take him at 12 because of the neck thing i'd feel better if it was at 25 right mm -hmm. or something like that um you know and and just uh, it, there's really nothing to not like about him uh you know, I think the only thing I, t I talk about really is just the – I wish there was a few more snaps of just raw explosiveness come around the corner and win with the bend that way. But top 20 pick, and I said Jalen Phillips, and that's who he really reminds me of. If you want to fall in love with him, yeah. just watch the USC tape. Oh, Because my gosh. I feel like he may have beaten every single one of the USC offensive linemen, left, right, in the middle. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> just everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's what he can do too. Like he's a – you know, it's third and four. You can move him inside, and he will be a pain in the ass for guards. And let alone, even if a team tries to run the ball, he's because of what you, we talked about already. He's not going to get blown out of the water there by the the run game or anything like that. Uh, he's great, and I'm big into this too. Of this is when I say flexible, pliable, fluid. Right? You've seen those words in my notes sometimes. Right? I'm big into like. You're not going to be just up here in a perfect position all game long, right? I mean, every now and then, like, Zach Martin's going to pull and he's going to hit you, and you're going to be like, oh, I'm bent like this, right? What do you do when you're like that, right? You know, the fourth and fifth rounders crumble and go to the ground. The first rounders go, ah, oh, I'm okay, and they overcome it, and they still get off it and make a tackle, right? That's 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 what I mean by that. Being in, oh, this guy made me move, and I got a guy here, and I'm now I'm stuck in this position, but I hopped off of him, and I still made the shuffle to my right to make the tackle, right? Where 
Well, we'll talk about a guy in a little bit here. It's a little bit more stiff where he gets in those positions and he goes down or it's just over, like the play's over a little bit. He's not going to recover that way. That, to me, is one thing that Dallas Turner and Latu were really good at Mm. is being put in those awkward, in-the-scrum positions and then still being able to redirect, shuffle, change directions, throw somebody off them while they're like in a weird yoga pose, right, and then still go, oh, get off me. I'm going to make the tackle anyways. They were really good in that department. And that, to me, goes into the the bendable, flexible, pliable thing that you try to piece together to go, ooh, this guy can do this as a pass rusher and do all that stuff. So two guys, immediate impact off the edge, the second of which, who the medical concerns are real, should fall to number 29 to my Detroit Lions <laughs> yeah, to right. pair up with Aiden <laughs> Hutchinson and really wreck offenses next year in the NFL. So now we go to tier number two. And this tier is traits you can cook with. And are your other two players in tier? We just have two tiers. We just we went two, two tiers. tiers. Thanks for paying attention. We have two tiers, so pre- and then we'll have the meeting. also <laughs> receiving votes. So your, your tier number two, your final tier. The pre-pod meeting was right here before we got going, about three minutes before. Uh, your number three edge rusher in the class of 2024 is? Will be Jared Verse out of Florida State, right? Jared Verse, I mean, come on, body. This is the Greek god body, right? That, that That's, the, I think, where you start. I mean, when you kind of turn on the film, right, I did get a chance to meet him in person, too. I mean, he, he's rocked up, right? I mean, everywhere. It's, it's incredible arms, incredible shoulders, neck, whatever, right? He doesn't have the waist and the legs, that Latu and Dallas Turner have, right? It's a little, again, I like the legs. Do I wish it was a little more narrow-waisted than the butt and the thighs really kind of stick out, protrude a little bit, right? Like, you know, can you picture Lawrence Taylor back in the day, right? That look, Micah Parsons, right? They have that look where it's like the waist is here, Mm. and then we get to the butt and the legs, and they're just like, whoa, there's something different about that, right? That's what, you know, he doesn't quite have that. It's still a good look. Don't get me wrong. Twitchy as hell, right? Explosive. Maybe in a lot of ways twitchier than Dallas Turner, right? Twitchier, and I mean the like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, I, he's right here. Get off me. Oh, I got it, right? Dallas Turner is so smooth and long. It just looks a little different that way, right? Short area quickness. Maybe he's a little twitchier and quicker in those ways than a Dallas Turner and even Latu in, in some ways, right? But at the same time, you know, might be twitchier and all that, but he's not in the same class, right, as far as the speed and the ability to bend around the corner as Dallas Turner or Latu in that department. He's a little bit of a stiff player, and that's why he's number three, right? It's strong. It's powerful, right? You know, there's explosion on contact and all that. You like that, but he is a guy that he gets put in some awkward positions and you go, ooh, he's going to go down, right? He plays, to me, smaller than 6'4", 254, right? To me, the difference between, and you, this is why I brought this up with the other guys, the other guys are naturally that. It's easy for them to be that. Jared Verse, I get it by seeing him in person and then watching the tape too. He's, he's not a natural 254. He's had to work really hard to be 254. Mm. I would bet you he's like 235 or 230 naturally walking around, right? And that leads to, yeah, maybe not quite, not the same strength as Latu or Dallas Turner to get off blocks, to just straight arm people and disengage and throw them that way. That's where he's a little bit different. He does not have the pass rush bend and potential. Uh, nor is he the player they are at this second as Dallas Turner or Latu. But damn, a really damn good edge player. There's no doubt about that. So get what he did during COVID here. What's that? He built a home oh, gym I know. with his dad, right. put on 40 pounds of muscle. So that's where he got the extra 40 pounds that would not have been natural without COVID. Thank God for the pandemic. Sure <laughs> I know. Will be he a told us that story. Pick. It's a cool story. Yeah, he's he's got a dad that's you know was in the armed forces, right? So he is all about his business and work hard and be happy that I'm grateful for these. You know, I got this opportunity and all of that. He's a great kid. He's going to be a great leader. He's going to work hard. He's going to do everything you want. And yeah, he's big time. I mean, he's your starting edge guy right away, day one. And there's no doubt about it that he's a first rounder. He just is missing a few things 
things as far as the pass rush is concerned that the other guys have that are that are pretty special in that department. Lance Zerline from NFL.com says he has hellish speed to power, bull rushing ability to run tackles deep into the pocket. PFF says his hands are powerful and violent. His swipes look like they hurt. Uh, so some of the things they saw yeah. with, with Verse here, uh, th- th- I think – a slam dunk first round pick is Definitely. what most people believe, yes. and that's what you believe as well. Yeah, I, I believe that as well. You know, again, I, I don't know. I don't think this is top twenty, right? I don't think we're in that area here. I think we're probably more into the eighteen to thirty-two range, maybe twenty to thirty-two, right? I guess that's kind of where I would see it. Uh, you know, there's some of that here, and we'll talk about this with the next guy too, where. You know, speed to power is not bad, right? But I don't know if I don't know if I'm sold on it working as much in the NFL as it did in college, right? To to just at least counter those points, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Where again, it's it's a different animal, and his speed is not that of to where I go, ooh, that's really going to threaten the top tackles in football with his upfield speed, first step, any of that, right? He's a little bit of a short strider. He's a little bit like the opposite of Dallas Turner, where. Sometimes it looks like he's moving faster than he really is, right? Because the feeds are a little bit more like Fred Flintstone, and they go fast, and there's a lot of turnover. Yeah. But you see him run down somebody, and you go, well, he don't run him down like Dallas Turner does, right? And that's where, again, the trained eye, looking at it more and more, you know, as you watch, those things start to, to pop out to you more and more. So he did the dodecagon. The 12-sided gone. So this might be the record. I don't know that we've had a dodecagon. I'm sure we have have in the past, but, I mean, this is all 12. This is all 12 sides right here. And uh, broad jump was very good, 90th percentile, 40-yard dash. Uh, What what is he lacking in? The weight, like you mentioned, and he might be playing heavier or as heavy as he can. Wingspan down just a little bit there. Arm length in the 50th percentile. Strong, though. Bench press in the 92nd percentile. Yeah. The, what, and, and, and Matt, Casey, did, if you let me know, what is Latu's wingspan? I think I missed that. I don't know if we got to it, and maybe we don't have it. But, like, yeah, you know, th- that that's what's going to scare people a little bit, right? We saw a wingspan for, I know, Dallas Turner, and it was totally towards the end, right? You know, this is what I would worry about. This is why I don't put him in the same spot as Latu or Dallas Turner because of, again, not only the explosive ability, the bend, his first step, you know, his first two or three steps because they're shorter strides. They don't cover the same ground that Latu and especially Dallas Turner, who's like the longest damn strides and legs you've ever seen, right? But then, too, you know, you, you worry about with a guy like this is not naturally as big and doesn't have the length and the wingspan is he can get swallowed up a little bit and he does not get off blocks the same way those guys do because of that, right? Again, because of Latu's length and wingspan and shoulders and same with Dallas Turner, they were awesome at holding people out, locking their arms and disengaging and making tackles. That's not necessarily what his strength is all the time, right? Latu's you know, was only in the 16th percentile wow. for wingspan. It's, it's so crazy. I mean, that's one where yeah, the numbers aren't going to match up, but wow, you watch the film and I sit there and just go, it's one of the, the things that I looked at to be one of the strong traits of what he does. I know. I know. So I'm, I'm, I am surprised by that. Um, and you know, again, that's why you watch the film, and sometimes you can't always go with the numbers. We're going to have some guys that we talk about our honorable mentions or still receiving votes after this where I'm going to go, you know, hey, yeah, there's some things here that you don't like, but they have this, this, and this that counterbalances it, and you go, wow, that's awesome, right? But, you know, more on verse, right? We talked about the limbs not being as long, 6'4", 254. I think he has to work to be that. He does get tired. Right, mm. That would be another thing that I would say jumps out as you watch games. You watch the games and you start to go, he's so high effort and he plays so hard and because I think he's not naturally as big as what he is, right? I do think he ga- gets gas. You see it on certain drives and you see it as the game goes along. And I think those are you know, things that certainly popped out to me that I didn't see on the other guys. Talked about his stiffness and his tightness a little bit, right? You know, he's he's uh, definitely ends up on the ground and gets pushed out of position a little bit more than the other two guys. He's yeah. not as good in that he department. He, he's a little clunkier, right? Lateral yes. movement, just a little clunkier. You watch yes. you watch him right after you've watched Turner and Latu, and it's not really that close. Uh, Halil's football talk says, do you believe there's a clear big three at the top with Latu, Turner, and Verse? Uh, where you can make the case for any is edge one, depending on what you're looking for. Now, that's what you're doing here, the practice of separating these guys, and you do have a clear 
pecking order for uh, the edge. I think one and class. two are in a different. You know, obviously, I think they're in a different tier or class. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, that, yeah. I mean, there you do hear discussion that you know, Dallas. Some people love Dallas Turner. Some people love Latu. And you do hear some people saying, "Yeah, I could take verse first off the board, depending on what you're looking for." Yeah. But you don't. You wouldn't see it depending on what any team's looking for. I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's clear cut first rounder. I think as you go through this, and again, you know. I don't think this is one me going against the draft community or anything like that. I think it's the more people watch, they're going to. It's just go. making a case. Could you make a case for verse number one? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, I just don't think the the raw ability is there, let alone the r- raw size of the human is not mm-hmm. in the same level as the other two guys. I wouldn't trust it. I have a hard time thinking that. You know, coaches and front office people who are very true to these things in a lot of ways, right? I have a hard time thinking they're going to be able to trust that, right? And, you know, it's just, hey, it's the bend, it's the length. He doesn't set the edge and get off the blocks like we talked about. Like you said, it's very obvious to see that right away, right? He doesn't have the first step the other guys have, right? Um, his bend is kind of overwhelming, right? His, he's got good strength, but it's not like, on the level of the other two where you go, well, they dominate the tight end every time. And the tackle, their worst plays are stalemates, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a big thing for me. What do your worst plays look like? Oh, nothing, right? You just stood him up at the line of scrimmage. He's got some plays where the worst plays are, yeah, he's on the ground or he gets pushed back a few yards or all that. So really like the guy, starting edge guy, 3-4 outside linebacker, pass rusher DN, whatever you want him to be. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's somewhere between 20 and 32. He is in tier two for you, traits you can cook with, and yeah, also right. in tier number two, your number four edge. This will be the final of your top four. Your number four edge in the class of 2024 is Chop Robertson, Penn State. Robinson, Robinson excuse me. <laughs> Chop Robinson. I'm we love it. these guys. We'll learn their name at one point. I'm only 50% on saying your names right at this point. That's uh, that's a little disappointing, right? I mean, we're just talking speed and explosion right here when I mean, you're talking about this guy. Just line him up wide, right? He's like perfect Seattle scheme, Jets defense, Houston Line him up wide, let him go get the quarterback, right? Because some of the other stuff is not going to be his cup of tea. He's not going to be able to hold his ground at the same capacity like Latu or Dallas Turner, right? You're not going to be, oh, play head up on the tackle in this play because we think you can kind of hold him and control him and disengage and make the plays that way, right? It's not that. Uh, he's, he's kind of a little bit more narrowed-shouldered right, with some really awesome-looking legs, right, and arms aren't real locked up. He's pigeon-toed, like you see a lot of great explosive athletes, and, yeah, he's got legs that scream explosion. They look like a top-tier running back or something like that of that nature, right? I mean, his first step, his get-off, uh, you know, they're, they're arguably the best in the draft. I mean, they're, they're that damn good. There's no doubt about that. The quickie, twitch, explosive, right? He can be disrupted by shooting a gap and, you know, can squeeze and get off the ball so quickly, get between the guard and the tackle and get in the backfield and do all that, right? So that type of stuff, straight line speed, get off the ball. Ooh, the quarterback's right there. I'm wide. I get to go do it. See, he got to do some stuff that, like, Dallas Turner and Latu didn't even get to do, where they got to get real wide, and they were basically like, if the quarterback drops past seven yards, you're basically just got to run a straight line. That's all you got to do, right? You don't even have to turn the corner. Right? If the quarterback goes back just a little too far, you won't have to who cares about the big tackle? You're just gonna run straight. He's not gonna be able to get there in time. So that's where he's great. But as far as like pure strength, hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Getting off blocks like we talk about, right? Disengaging, doing all that, setting the edge if he's not in the rugged. No, he's not in even the class of Law Two or Dallas Turner in that department. Right, he's to me a total weak side edge wide nine pass rusher. That's where you really want him to be. Right, doesn't really have many moves. All right, so I think there's some stuff there. You know, he's got the basics. Okay, you know, doesn't use his hands all that much. He's all about just winning with speed. Right, I think that that's the big thing. Right, but I think there 
is some things here too and why I make them four and I love all those things, right? And you can look at it and go, I don't know, is it Bryce Huff who just signed for, you know, $17 million a year to go to, uh, where the hell did Bryce Huff sign for? Um, Eagles. Eagles, that's right. Left the Jets and went to the All-Star Eagles, right? Mm -hmm. You know, is that is he this guy or is he like a speed guy that we go, oh, it's just never going to work and all he is is speed, right? Is it What is it? And that's where I think I make him four because, again, I don't think he's as all-around good player as the other three guys we've talked about, right? I like some of his pass rush stuff better than Jared Verse, but where I question it and go is just go, I don't know if some of the pass rush moves and the way he won mm-hmm. won – I'm not sure that's going to be able to happen in the NFL. I guess that's what I'm going to say. I question that a little bit. You know, with the lack of length, there is no real speed to power, right? And it's not incredible, really good bend. Uh, I just, to me, I do worry a little bit if he's not a little bit of like, hey, I work at college, but I'm not going to be the same type of guy when I get to the NFL. So I went back and I looked at 2022. I looked uh, versus the Buckeyes. Yeah. When they had uh, yeah. Dewan Jones, Jones. Jones and they had uh, yeah, what, Paris, Paris Johnson. Johnson. Right. Uh, he did nothing. They lo- they locked him up. Uh, he had no chance against either one. And, and it was, you know, Johnson's a first rounder, eighth overall. But what Jones was a fourth rounder, big giant human being, but still a fourth rounder, and Chop had no chance against either that's, one of those that's guys. That's what would scare me. No shame right. because most players didn't have a chance against those guys. But when I got all done with it, I went back and watched that game too. Yeah, right. Because I was like, damn, I don't know if he really played anybody big time this year, a tackle or anything like that, right? Mm-hmm. He played the Michigan game where he was probably his best game, right? Because I watched that. But I they played a guy at right tackle that doesn't play right tackle. That's what I started to realize. Because mm-hmm. then I started to watch other games. I saw Michigan. I was like, wait, the guy I saw chop beating, he's not their right tackle. He's their guard. They must have been injured that game. This is their – and I was like, damn, I knew that. What the hell, right? So – that's what would the lack of moves, a little being stiff and upright. Another guy that I don't think is naturally as big as what he's listed at. The arms aren't, the length isn't there, right? It's at that part with 32 and a half where teams start to go, oh, I don't know. I don't love that. Like 32 and a half is getting, you know, towards the, the bottom, right? Where you want to trust that. Yep. Right, you know, usually there's got to be something else. Well, especially when if you're if you're trying Maybe to two seventy five and thirty two and a half inch yeah. arms, then they go, well, damn, he's two seventy five. He's strong as shit. Right, right? that changes. Or if it. the tape's awesome, you're or just the, like, man, he's exactly. he's blowing things out. So we right. got his right uh, nonagon here and. All the athletic stuff. I mean, that's what he did at the combine. Yeah. People were just like, he's gonna he's gonna blow it out of the water. He's gonna be awesome in all the athletics things, and he was. Forty yard dash, ninety seventh percentile. Broad jump, ninety fifth. Ten yard split, ninety seventh percentile. But then all the physical things: height, weight, wingspan, arm length. You're talking twenty seventh percentile and lower in all those. That's, that's that's what scares me. And you know, it scares me too. You know, you talk about the bend. It's not great balance like Latu and Dallas Turner, right? Again, they talked about the pliability, the fluidness, their ability, like their ability to be, oh, wait, there's a guy leaning on me and I could still be in a bent, weird position, like going to the Ohio State game, right? There's a few plays where you go, oh, he's about to get around the edge or whatever. But those guys are big and long and NFL guys, yeah. and they kind of hit them with his arms, and he can't really recover to where you go, oh, he got off a good step. He got off to a good start. That was a good first step. It looks like he's about to go around the edge right but then one of those kind of just gets an arm on the shoulder or whatever and he's not big enough and strong enough nor the bend is good enough to where he can still stay on track right that's that's the difference and I think those are little things that even I have learned more about as the years have gone on right I know you're Johnny film watcher now I right am. and it's weird at times because you know Devin's end you go well there's a lot of the game that's not that great or you know very overwhelming ran right? away from almost yeah like, oh, okay yeah. great blah, 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 right so you got to sort through it and pick for it and try to you know what do i see can they piece it together and that was the thing that bothered me about him and in other games too even this year where i'd go oh he's gonna get around the edge and then you know the bend and the ability to absorb that contact, he doesn't have that. And then that arm punch or whatever just pushes him by and he doesn't get to the quarterback. I think we have some video of him playing yeah. in the Big Ten this past year. So I'm sure this is all of his highlight films and shows uh, some of the things he can do. So here you go, Chris. Here he is against Indiana, yeah. who was not very good this year. He gets a sack. 
You want to you want to yeah, you want to yeah, narrate it. Yeah, Chris? it's not bad. <laughs> no, so here is Maryland, or Maryland around the edge, forty four coming around the edge. There you see around the edge too. You know, so many of them are just blurs. That's UMass again, mm-hmm. uh, blurs where you just go. He got such a good jump and a good start. The guy never had her chance. And these are some of the th- ones that I'm talking about where I want to go. One, he's never going to play a tackle like that in football. Two, he's not going to surprise people as much as he does in college at times. Let alone. Yeah, some of his sacks are, I don't want, you know, system-ish, right? Helped him out a little bit. It's not like you're like, oh, wow, he's just beating this guy play after play after play. This guy's got his hands full with him. It's it's not that, right? Like I said, I, you know, I just, the bendable, yep. tightly wound hips, you know, haven't seen speed to power yet, right? Is he long enough, broad enough, big enough man? You know, and and one of the things I I wrote, you know, again, he is a guy that I think is going to be overdrafted to a degree because of traits and whatever else, right? The athletic traits. The athletic traits and that one ability, that one elite trait of, whoa, the get off and the explosion is so good and rare, right? (sighs) Oh. Even though we might, the rest of the player might not blow us away, we just, we might have a chance to take a chance on that. We might have to take this guy at 26 or 7, right? Because it's just, uh, that, that, that is rare in that department. And then we got to just, hey, will the guy work? Can we mold him into being a better, well rounded football player? Because, like, you know, I, as I told you, I just wrote, right, he doesn't affect the whole game on the same level as Latu, Dallas Turner. Right, um, uh, uh, Broswell, the other Alabama guy, uh, Ellis, the other guy from Utah, Booker, the guy from Kansas. We're going to talk about all these guys after where I go on a play by play basis, those guys affect the game way more than Chop Robinson, way more. But they don't have three rockets up their ass coming around the edge. Mm-hmm. And that's where that's where teams are going to have to do their due diligence. And again, it gets into that special elite thing, right? You know, some of the pressures and sacks, like I told you, I'm just not sure some of them are going to translate sure. to the NFL. Sure. With the type of animal and guy you're dealing with, that tackle, like I said, they're not going to get, oh, the ball was snapped. Oh, he got around me. Like it is some of that or missteps or whatever. I, I felt like a little of it was, you know, he benefited from who they were playing the college football a little bit at times. But the traits get them into your top four, and that's it. We stop there with your top four, two tiers, immediate impact guys, Dallas Turner, Leatu Latu, and then you got Jared Verse and Chop Robinson in your tier number two. And so here are the others receiving votes. You've yes. mentioned them, Austin Booker, Kansas, Chris Braswell, Alabama, Jonah Ellis, Utah, uh, Marshawn Keeneland, uh, West uh, Western Michigan, Western Michigan. And then you got Braylon Trice there uh, from Washington, and Ooh. so what Matt has instructed us to do with yeah. your others receiving votes right. is give the one best thing that they do, and one thing you think that kind of holds some of these guys, okay. these guys that's, back. That's a good way to do it. Way to go there, Matthew Casey. All so right, as so. you as you flip through here, I yep. will say that as you described your top four, yeah. and now we're getting to these other guys, right. it does seem like overall. Like you don't, it's a little underwhelming. Like I think last year when we had this same podcast and you talked about all the edge guys, like the Will McDonalds, the guys that even had lower on your list, you're kind of talking up some of the traits. I feel like these guys, you have a few more concerns or just reservations. I, I would say so. Maybe not as slam dunky as maybe like Dallas Turner excites me as much as anybody in the draft, mm-hmm. but the film doesn't warrant maybe. Like what I saw from some other guys last year, I was like, oh, damn, they definitely do this good. They do that good, blah, 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 right? Like we talked about, a little projection involved, yep. right? But like, I do I sit here and go, oh, he could be Von Miller in two years, right? The, like, no doubt about it, but it's not there yet, right? And there's a part of him, here's another aspect, again, that I should have brought this up. I wish he just played a hair more reckless. Mm-hmm. I do. I wish there was a little bit more of like, hey, you're the man, just throw your body around go in there dive in there make the tackle whatever right that's what I would like to see a little bit more of and we'll see last year's my number one the Tyree Wilson who went to the Raiders I'm not giving up on him again you know I know I'm not the only one that saw that 
And I still believe, like, if he doesn't have the foot issue, I think he's still probably going to be the first guy off the board last year. He was kind of like, you said it before we started the pod. When you watched his film last year, you were kind of like, holy shit, can man anybody amongst, block him? Man amongst right. boys, who you right. didn't really see with these guys yes. all the time. Yes. But we got some others receiving Sorry. votes, yeah, some guys who did do some things. Austin Booker yes. for Kansas, who, you know... He's got like lightning quick speed to the quarterback. He played against Illinois. Luke Altmyer, I think he knocked him into next century. It's just like he can get to the quarterback. If he sees the quarterback, he gets to the quarterback. He has got he was one of the most pleasant surprises. One, because the combine numbers are very underwhelming and don't explain the player, right? If you look at the combine, I'd go six, four and a half, two forty, thirty three and seven eighths. He ran a four seven nine and ran a one six seven. I'd go, I don't, what? Like, how is this guy one of the, the better pass rushers? No way. But pass rush moves, great bend. The get off and explosion is better than those numbers would tell you. His ability, even his 33 and 7 eighths arm, arm length, right? It's, it's pretty long. You'd maybe like it a little longer, but he's got broad shoulders too. So I'm guessing the wingspan will be more than I think. But yeah, like you said, I mean, he can use his hands, and he's got a little variety of pass rush moves. He's got some bend. And like a Dallas Turner, the strides cover a lot of ground. You know, one thing that jumps out to me, too, with some of these guys, because he doesn't do this, getting down in the three-point stand, some of these guys don't want to do that, and they're made to do that when they run the 40. When you watch Austin Booker, I would say 95% of his snaps, he does not put his hand on the ground. He just wants to be kind of standing up like a receiver, and he feels like he can probably get out quicker that way. So, you know, again, I really liked him. But getting off the blocks, being slippery, side-to-side movement, just overall effect of the game, I really liked Austin Booker a lot. He was fun lot, to watch. Right? What, what's one thing keeping him out of your top four? I think though? it's going to be the overall size and strength. People aren't going to trust it all the way. At 240, right? You know, it's not a, like, painful skinny. But I think people are going to go like, wait, is that going to work against Lane Johnson and Trent Williams? Like, are we sure about that? I think that's what's going to hurt him ultimately. I think he ultimately, though, is still a second round pick. I, you know, I put 40 to 60. He's one of the first guys I watched, right? So maybe that's a little high, but yeah, yeah I, I like it. And he was, you know, he reminded me in some ways because his arms flare everywhere and everything, right? Where I was like, yeah, he's got some Max Crosby to him as far as what the body style and length at times and how he looks and plays that way. Next on your list here is Chris Braswell from Alabama. I put in here, uh, he believes in his strength for sure. He attacks double teams with pleasure. Yes. He's just a great all-around football player, (laughs) right? There might not be no sexy elite trait where you go, whoa, he's so fast or, you know, He's crazy strong, but you look at him, you go, he's really good at everything, and he does not have a weakness. And the more and more you watch him, the more you go, you know, he can, he's got a little bit more explosion off the line of scrimmage. He's got a little bit more bend and pass rush value than, like, when I first turned it out, I just thought, oh, it's going to be a big physical, you know, 3-4 outside linebacker Alabama type, right? Mm-hmm. I kind of thought it was going to be that kind of guy. I, I I kept going. I kept going, man, I kind of like this guy. But, you know, he's bendable, you know, got a little bit of fluidity that way. And like you said, for 251, and even the way he looks in his uniform, you're kind of just like, wait, is there, is, there's no way he's 251. The yeah. way he can hold up against people and contact, like I would have thought he was 270 with how he looks in the uniform. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, 4'6", uh, 159, right? 33 and a quarter arms, right? He's another guy that I think goes in the mid – Mid to late second round, for sure. Uh, and uh, the thing holding him back is just that oh, explosion, basically. I think so. That elite trait, yes. right? That, that, that to me is really uh, – and one of the things I wrote at the end is he, he's a really good player who doesn't do anything elite or doesn't have that mm-hmm. elite trait, but he does, have, he does do everything well, has no weakness. He is a starting NFL edge defender, has more explosiveness and first step than you think – He's a little bit of a long strider. He has bend, has speed to power, you know, plays run really well. Right. And if you need another drop in coverage, he's athletic enough to do that kind of stuff. And as he well. stuck it out at Alabama, too. He, he wasn't did. starting the first few years, right. stuck it out, didn't transfer, exactly and then got right. to start and shine. I like to see that, too. Jonah Ellis, I like watching him from Utah. Uh, I put slippery, definitely slippery element to his game. And I think in watching him against USC, he got his hands on Caleb Williams as much as any other defensive end did hey you know 
full transparency, when I first sent you the top five, I put his name as five, right? Because I was like, all right, I, I don't want to cop out here. I do top five. That's what I do. Gosh, if I got to pick one, I, I guess I'll pick him, right? But then, you know, I send the text in a few minutes. You know how I go. And then I go back and look at my nose. And I'm like, oh, man, this is really close. I oh, like shit. all these guys. I don't here, know yeah. if I can do this. Right. I mean, you said it right, right? I mean, again, I think if you, if you compare him to a Chop, Chop Robinson, you go, the effect on the total game is way greater from Jonah Ellis. Jonah Ellis is everywhere. Right, he's great change of directions. He's got great play strength. Right, I mean he throws people around constantly. Right, or tight ends, tackles. You're amazed by it. Let alone, like you said, he's slippery. He's got instincts to go. Ooh, the ball's going here. I know I might supposed to stay in this gap. I'm just gonna shoot through here and make the tackle and do that. Right. He's got good get off. It's not great. It's a little bit of the short, choppy step version, but he is an explosive, twitchy athlete. There's no doubt about that, right? And their hand, his hands too. You know, his hands. He's definitely uh, like the Austin Booker from Kansas, a little more advanced than a Latu or a, or a uh, Dallas Turner in that department. Reminds me of a. Here's a name from the past a little bit, right? Uh, Connor Barwin. You remember Connor Barwin? Not really. He played for the Texans. He played for the Eagles. Went to the University of Cincinnati. He was a starter. Probably went to the Pro Bowl a few years. He's a okay. good player, right? Not a superstar, right? But starts on your defense and gets like eight to 12 sacks for six or eight years in his career, right? Yeah. That's the kind of guy I think. So if you saw him, you can, you'd go, you could be the next Connor Barwin. <laughs> he might go, he really and he'll do just what you did. Who? Because <laughs> one thing I know is the young generation, generation <laughs> does not pay attention to the old generation yeah. nearly as much as our generation yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, you know, But, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the big thing. But, man, the more great, quick, side-to-side -side good, natural pass rusher, right? You just wish the get-off and first step were longer and more explosive. He's got but good a, balance. Spin oh, moves. Great, he like does his spin move Great all the time. contact balance, yeah. right? Taking on blocks, never goes down, sheds them. People fall off of them. You said it right. Overall disruption is great, right? I, 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 and I, the last thing I wrote is I really like this kid. I said mm -hmm. I'm not sure he's freaky enough to be a top five pass rusher, but he's damn good and he can start on my defense any day of the year. Really good athlete. Crazy strong for 248. And another guy I think is like a mid-second late second rounder you know who can start on my defense is a guy that played in michigan and before we get to your next guy he's got a big butt he's got a big butt yes Woo! it is we that time like big butt so we cannot lie the big butt of the week oh. Oh. time to give some love to these Woo! big guys some it, touches it's a couple sacks of course <laughs> fumble he's a butt ting superstar Thanks. Give it to him, Ahmed. One butt cheek. And this is why you're the big butt expert of the world right now. Woo! This guy's got two butt cheeks. Big <laughs> ones. 267 pounds, 6'3", 34 and a half inch arms. So you like to see that. From Western <sighs> Michigan, yes. Marshawn Nealon. Uh, at the Combine was good, too. Ran the fastest three cone and shuttle of any defensive lineman and linebacker at the Combine. Uh, showed some power on his tape. Winning some battles with the Iowa offensive linemen. Played all over, inside, out side on the line former high school tight end raw certainly but uh, I think the the clay is there to be molded I I do he, he is the guy that made me take Ellis's name off right uh. and go wait I forgot about Neeland right you know uh, I, I I don't I, I can't am I sure right and he is the guy right and as I was thinking this and sending you text messages last night, right, he's the guy that I worry that will go, wait, he is one of the best pass rushers in football. Why didn't we draft him in the top 30 picks of the draft? Like, what? why, right? right? It's not that sight, you know, that crazy, oh, it's 4-5 speed, right? It's mm -hmm. not that. It's not a 1-5-4, 10-yard split, but it's a 1-6-6 which is pretty good for, you know, basically 270 pounds. But it's the other stuff that you talked about, right? I think it's, it's, it's the, the looseness, the pliability of the athlete and the strength. Like, like I, would, I worry or I think this guy could end up being the 
Zadarius Smith or the Matt Judon that we're going, why did we miss on that guy? Well, because it wasn't super sexy. It had everything. It's got the long arms, and maybe we're not giving some of the power stuff of it enough credit for what it can do in the NFL, right? Because you saw it. He moves guards. He does that a lot, and he can make the miss and pass rush too. But, yeah, I liked Marshawn Nealon a lot. So he is included in your others receiving votes along with one more. Braylon Trice from Washington. Braylon Trice is a really good football player, right? Not an elite pass rusher that way. Not an elite, really, athlete altogether, right? Kind of a little bit like we've talked about. Does everything well. Starting edge defender, no doubt about it. I thought he was bigger Mm. than what he actually weighed in on, right? But, yeah, there's no, you know great physical trait that you see there, right? Again, I, I think he's a 3-4 outside linebacker, you know, 4-3 defense, and no doubt about that, but not enough explosion or speed to get around the edge on a consistent basis. He's got good power, but not so much that it makes up for the lack of speed to where you're just like, well, he can't be in speed, but his power will be enough to get it done. That's not going to happen, right? Yeah. You know, he, he can be disruptive, good player, but I think he's kind of end of the second, kind of top of the third round type of player. He had a lot of pressures, but Washington did a pretty good job of scheming up some stunts and some unblocked pressures exactly. for him. That's, that's what you got to look for. Yeah. Exactly right. Like, are you beating the guy or is the defense helping you out? And right. You know, we've talked about this before, and I think there was a little too much of that. The stats overrated the player. The team being so good, I think, overrated the player. Good player. Don't get me wrong. Uh, But, yeah, just not in the class of some of the other guys. watching all these Pac-12 guys, I mentioned it before, you get to watch Caleb Williams with a bad offensive line. He's amazing. Like, like should have been Trice, sacked like sixty other times. In Trice the had season. no had no chance. Even <laughs> when he beat the offensive, he had no chance uh, of sacking uh, Caleb Williams on any of those pressures. Uh, so those are all the guys who were in the running for number five. If yeah. you were to do a top five, but yeah. we chickened out because there were so many that were How in dare the I? others receiving votes category. But now DraftKings is not going to chicken out. They're going to give us the exact odds for the first defender drafted. Ooh, this is good. And right now, the odds-on favorite is Dallas Turner, your number one edge out of Alabama, minus 220. But then your man crush, corner, Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo, plus 350. Jared Verse, the third choice at plus 700. Then you got a corner in Terry on Arnold, a defensive tackle who we have not talked about yet out of your Texas University or University of Texas Longhorns, Byron Murphy. And then you got Latu after that. So these odds, what stands out to you? Anything in particular? <sighs> I think after a while, I mean, Dallas Turner, I, I get it. And, of course, we know. I mean, he's a freak, and, mm. you know, it's an edge pass rusher, so I understand that. But I do think after watching the edge guys, listen, I think it's even less crazy now. Like, to think Quenyon Mitchell can't be the first guy off the board, I, you know, uh, he's definitely worthy of that, right? If we're talking about, and this, hey, these are the pass rushers, and these are the cream of the crop of the draft and the defense side of the ball, well, then Quenyon Mitchell is no doubt in that conversation, right? That for sure. The other one I would look at there, just, you know, again, where I think it's good value is, you know, Latu. You know, Latu being that far down, right? I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if there's going to be teams that are going to go, wait, wait, I actually like Latu better than Dallas Turner, right? Mm-hmm. Now, the medical stuff and all of that, but if you got some extra change and you want to take a shot, you know, those would be the two guys well, that, that jump out to me. It would be the Atlanta Falcons. If the Atlanta Falcons, who it seems like they're going to go edge, you don't know for sure, no, but no, right. like if they just like Latu better, why not? Yeah. I, you know, again, the conviction for he it. He could be, I could see some viewing him as the safer pick, right? And just going, like we talked about, Dallas has got all these freaky traits, but, you know, you don't see him put it together all the time well, on it's film, almost like work, like, all of that, right? What about the year with uh, Trayvon Walker and Aiden Hutchinson, exactly right? right? It's like Trayvon Walker had the, the traits and all the physical ability and tested great and was strong. And Aiden Hutchinson did as well, but he also produced at Michigan so yes. maybe it's a little the same thing. I, I, I think there is a, a little bit of that I do you know I think I think there is and we'll see where this goes I think as a pass rusher Turner's got a better chance than Trayvon Young or, or Trayvon Walker excuse mm. me right and who did who did I I mean I I like Trayvon Walker did I have him two that year I still had eight and one didn't I uh, I think you had, had Walker a, one I had Walker one but they were close yeah 
Yeah, I couldn't. I can't even remember what I did there. But clearly, and I think you said like we talked about it. Like if a team wanted to take Aiden Hutchins and one, you'd have no problem. with Yeah, that. yeah. I think maybe that's how I phrased it, right? And he's clearly been the guy so far. Yeah. I mean, Aiden's uh, definitely one of the best edge guys in football. Here, I'm going to give two other guys a little shout. Hold on, out. we got to say okay. this. Oh, oh yeah. wait, in our odds here or no? No, not in our odds. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NBA as well. And this season, new customers can bet five dollars and get a hundred and fifty in bonus bets instantly. You can download the app. Use the promo code on. Un- button when you sign up DraftKings Draft Sportsbook, Sportsbook the, the crown, crown is, is yours. yours and now we end with one more thing about two more players <laughs> apparently brought to you by Peacock streaming exclusively on uh, or a Columbo is streaming exclusively on Peacock Chris go Jalix Jalix okay Hunt yeah all right from Houston Christian University thank you these are real Robin Hoods that I want to throw out there, okay. right? Guys that I go, probably not go into the middle of the draft, but like have some things about them where you go, wow, like that stands out. I mean, he is long as hell, 34 and a half inch arms almost, ran 1-6, right? Kind of has that Daniil Hunter type-ish look, right? where it's not quite as what you want. You wish it was a little, let me take over more and be a little more aggressive, but there's still some things there where you go, wow, I don't know. If he gets in the right environment and he's the right kind of human being himself, he could he could be something. He's in that class of players, smaller, college, exactly. under the radar, You're but just tested not really sure. well. Exactly yeah. right, exactly yeah. right. You know, And then the other one is... Muhammad Kamara from Colorado State. Okay. Okay. He is undersized guy, right? A little bit more of the nature of like a Chop Robinson where, you know, it's 6'1", it's 250, it's incredible strength. You see some explosion at times and things that go, ooh, it's there. You don't see it all the time, right? But he'd be another one that I'd go, hey, if there's somebody kind of out of nowhere three years from now, like that we go, ooh, whoa, this guy turned out to be a pretty good player. He'd be another one that I'd throw on the radar that way. All right. Yeah. That's good. All Two right. more things brought to you by Columbo, streaming exclusively on, on Peacock. On the Peacock. That's it. We did it. We did it. Pass rushers in the book. Wow. DBs in the book. Monday, send the questions in. AMAs, let's dissect it a little bit. Anybody we didn't talk about, anybody you want me to go further in on, you know, break it down a little bit more, right? We certainly can do that. We'd love to hear the questions. We'd love to hear the feedback as always. Ahmed Farid's the man. Thank you for leading the charge as always. Remember, we got corners we did on Monday, pass rushers Wednesday. So Monday for the AMA, whatever you want in that department let's just yeah. try to hit on that and if there's any other broader draft questions or whatever or bidet questions or like bidet we said questions. before we haven't had that in a long no time no bidet questions any deodorant questions for Ahmed you just any bring personal them all. question anything. anything you want to know about us personally basically yes it's, it's I'll tell AMA. you AMA I'll tell you everything ask me anything I'll let you know it all <laughs> all right everybody you know Chris will yeah. be good everybody have a good weekend be safe out there enjoy some March Madness uh, this weekend I know I will be see you Monday peace out homies and opening day in baseball yes. I won't forget about that oh. peace out homies clap, clap it up clap it up Yo, yo, homies, what's up? I know it's the off-season, but it's never the off-season on Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Me and Ahmed Farid are going to be here for it all. You know we got free agency. We're going to break it all down. The draft, the rankings of positions. Of course, we're going to unpack it all. Hit subscribe, get to my free agency reactions, 2024 draft rankings, and more. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.